Copin's off first place and then we're going to see what's underneath because what we need on this wall we need a good footing so what we'll do is I'll put a four inch footing in so that that's a good base for the stone wall to be built on. Mm -hmm. Okay well we best get cracking because the boss is watching. Right so what Matt's going to do now we need to put in a, a footing for the wall that's going up and I'm, Matt's going to dig down to around 75 mil to put a concrete footing in which will then put the base for the wall to go on and of course then it starts building so this is going to come out now and uh, then we'll introduce the concrete into the footing. Right, so the mixed ballast is now going to go into the trench uh, Matt's going to level it out it's important that the footing is actually uh, is level to take the wall if it's not level of course you're going to have a wonky wall which we don't want as you, as you can see, the mix itself is semi-dry, which is what we want. We don't want it slopping around all over the place because uh, it's a fact that cement, the wetter it is, the weaker it is. So once we get this levelled out, we'll put a uh, spirit level on it, tamp it down, and then it'll be ready to take the wall. As you can see, Matt now is tamping down with a, with a spirit level to make sure that the footing is completely level, ready to accept the wall. And uh, once that's done, we'll just leave that, we'll leave that uh, 24 hours for it to cure off and then we'll be able to uh, build on it. As you can see, we're back here today. The, uh, the sun is with us, the weather's with us, and we're, we're really getting on to a good pace. Chris, why did you actually pick this product for this, uh, for this job? Well, as you know, Trev, there are hundreds of different walling products out there on the market. We've chosen Marshallite pitched face walling. Um, this suits this scheme um, down to the ground, really. Uh, it matches the paving. It's got a nice contemporary look about it. There are two different sizes in this particular scheme. So uh, in terms of matching it up and, and making the project suit the overall uh, style of the house, this is absolutely perfect product for it. Yeah, I think it's good for here as well because what we've got here is uh, we've got a bit of a retaining wall and the client has decided they don't want a double skin wall, they want a single skin mm -hmm. wall. And because we're only going up three or four course, it's absolutely ideal for this situation. Fantastic. That's good. As you can see, Matt is uh, introducing the bricks onto the, uh, the footing that we, uh, we did earlier. That's now gone off. We, you, if you see where he's laying the bricks onto the bed, he's taking the top of the brick to the top of the line. That is what actually gives you your levels. In that uh, incorporation of the brick, he's putting in a, a 10 to 12 mil joint, and he's gonna incorporate that all the way through. So that way, from left to right, you're gonna get it completely level all the way along without having to do a spirit level tap on every brick. String line is really important that you work to tap them down onto the mortar bed, keep it straight. He's putting a, a stream of mortar down, which will accept the block onto the top, and then just lining it through. Then he'll bring the block onto it, press it down, give a good compression, and then from there, he'll just put a little fillet onto the end of the block, which will then give you your joint at the top. Again, with the string line, that is giving you your levels. Important that we actually keep the levels straight, he will put it down, tap it down to the string line and then use the spirit level once that's all done to make sure that everything is level and, uh, and on course. Right, what Matt's going to do now is introduce the uh, coping. He's going to wet the back of it. The reason for that is what we don't want is the moisture to be drawn out of the mortar and into the stone so it will stay solid and keen to the wall. There you go, introducing it onto the wall. Now I'm going to tap it down and what he'll do then is just make sure that everything's level on top. So he'll get his spirit level, run it across the top of the wall, make sure that everything is level from far right to far left. Job done, looks beautiful. Once Matt's put the, uh, the wall up, you see the joints, then what you'd normally do is strike that off with a jointing iron. Now this is the jointer we're going to use and uh, depending on the weather, it's we touch the point just to see that it's just got a bit of resistance, not too wet, just nice and dry, and then Matt will now point it in. The reason this, this gives a nice finish to the wall, and it also gives a nice recess joint, which shows the wall into its best. As you can see, as he's striking it through, you get the uh, snots onto the paving, you just clean those up, but as you can see, it's pretty dry at the moment, which is nice, so you get a nice textured finish to it. As you can see, once Matt's actually uh, finished doing all the pointing in, he'll then get a soft brush, and then he'll just stroke it over the face of the wall and it'll just take the rough edges off and give a nice textured finish to the wall. 